Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today I want to talk a bit about the new hair curve rendering, which is a major improvement in Blender 5.0. Essentially, this isn't entirely new. Blender has been working with the new hair curve system as early as 3.4. And I've already made lots of tutorials about hair recarpets or various netting tutorials uh, that required this technique. Traditionally, the only way to make a curve actually appear in the final render was to convert them into meshes. For the legacy curve object type, you needed to bevel the curve so it became a tube-like mesh. Uh, you can confirm its mesh essence in the spreadsheet. Similarly, in geometry nodes, you had to use curve to mesh. Starting in 3.4, the new design combines curves and hair into a single object type. This is a new object type. From that point on, hair is curve and the curve means hair. The big advantage is that curves can now be rendered directly without going through beveling or curve to mesh. Up to this point, you may realize that every time you use curve to mesh, you were generating a lot more vertices, edges, and faces. These are very bad for performance. Here in this simple setup, you can see the performance in geometry nodes is whatever. If I turn on curve to mesh, it becomes much more. And depending on the resolution you input to your profile, it can be more and more. It's also not just a geometry nodes because the renderer will have to deal with these polygons too. The reason I started making tutorials with this new system in 3.4 was because rendering hair curves directly is expected to be much faster since it avoids generating all those extra elements. Another thing I want to remind you is that in 4.5, I've made a tutorial about a breaking change to the curve to mesh node, which is no longer influenced by radius. In the comments, people asked, if the set curve radius node no longer works with curve to mesh, why not just remove this node? The answer is that even though set curve radius doesn't work for curve to mesh anymore for whatever reasons, it actually has a much better role in the new hair curve system because it directly controls uh, the rendered curve thickness. So if we've technically had this system since 3.4, What's the big change in 5.0? The fatal issue for years was that the new hair curve system worked reasonably well in cycles, but not in EV. That didn't just mean EV had rendering issues. It also broke the entire solid view in the viewport. So you were basically forced to preview in cycle render. For someone like me working on knitting animation with a lot of transitions, not being able to use a solid view made it almost unworkable. As you may guess, the biggest issue that kept me from using hair curves more often had to be fixed in 5.0. And then yes, the EV developer finally addressed this long-standing problem. Now, EV almost fully supports the new hair curve rendering system. Although the transition from the old curve type to the new one is not fully complete and probably won't be finished even in 5.0 series, the new hair curve type is now truly functional in nearly all aspects. We will discuss more details in the future video. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this one and I will probably see you next time. Bye-bye.